Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله it is very nice to finally see students back on campus uh, it's been a year and a half or so I guess for many of you guys uh, الحمد لله I'm glad to be back as well uh, Jazakallah khair for the MSA for inviting me back. Uh, it's always nice to come back to school, meet new faces, <coughs> see the new youth that are there, and the next generation of the Muslims, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al An'am, he says, he says, قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي خَزَائِنُ اللَّهِ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ وَلَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي مَلَكٌ إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ إِلَّا مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرُ أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this ayah, He tells Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ Tell the people, tell the Quraysh, tell the detractors of this Qur'an, Tell them that you do not bring anything of your own. You do not say anything of your own. And he goes on and he says, Tell them that what you bring is the qazayin of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the treasures that he is bringing to the people. And, and further on the ayah, he says that, I do not know what is from the unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that, tell them that you don't know anything from the unseen. Wala Adam al that he does not know anything from the unseen. The ayah continues, and it says, tell them, Wala aqulu lakum inni malak, that I'm not an angel either. All what I bring and what I follow is what was given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now, in the next part of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الْعَمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ Are the people who have eyesight, and the ones who are blind, are they the same? Are the ones who have blindness, and the ones who are able to see, are they the same? It's a rhetorical question. And then he ends the ayah by saying, أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ Why is it that you don't think? This ayah is actually very, very important, especially for the youth. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting a stage for us. He's asking a question, and it's not about the blindness of the eye here. If you think about it, the ayah is not talking about are you blind or is the blind person and the person who has sight, are they the same? That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about the blindness because of loss of eyesight. Because the next part of the ayah says, do you not think? So it's talking about the blindness that you have because you don't think, because your mind is closed, because you don't reflect on the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling these people who have rejected the Quran, who have rejected the message of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you are literally blind because you don't look at the ayat, you don't study them, you don't... Uh, uh, you don't view them as from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're rejecting the haqq. <coughs> For you guys who are, who are at university, this is where I want to connect it to our daily lives. You are in your formative years of adulthood. These four years of college, this is where your personality gets refined. You know, there's something called formative years when you're young. That's when your parents teach you good tahzeeb, right? What is right, what is wrong, how to act. This is those formative years when you're two years old, three years old, four years old, 
go to kindergarten, primary school, and so forth. But this is your adulthood. The next phase of your life, you're going to have families. You'll have children. You'll be dads. You'll be moms. And this next generation, which is coming soon, within a couple of years, you're done with your junior year, your senior year, and you're done. You're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a full grown adult. And you're expected to hold responsibilities. You're expected to have a family. You're expected to raise children. And that's coming really soon. So in these years, in these four years of college, if you do not take care of your personality, then the next generation that will come through you may not be a Muslim. The habits, the values, the principles, the ideas that you carry today will have a reflection on the next generation, on your family, on your kids. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's telling us, think within the Quran. And especially as you learn new subjects in school, there are ideas that are imparted upon you that are not from the deen. And this is where the conflict occurs, where you'll be taught ideas in your classes, in your sciences or your humanities or your social studies, whatever it is. There are, there are ideas that are in contradiction to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to what the Quran mentions, to what our deen teaches. And if you're not critical about that, you will get lost in the un-Islamic ideas that are taught. And that is actually my first point. I only have two points. That you, everybody, especially you, you have to be critical thinkers. You cannot take everything that is given to you on face value. You have to think. You have to examine. You have to question. You have to question within the parameters set by Islam. So what is right and wrong is not defined by liberal ideas, which you will learn in school. It is defined by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what is right or wrong. I hope that makes sense. I'll give you another example. Anybody who's from engineering school, physics, etc., there's something called the first law of thermodynamics. I'm sure most of you know about this. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy can neither be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to the other. Correct? This is in contradiction to your belief. If energy can neither be created or destroyed, that means energy is eternal. But we know everything is created. There is only one ilah. There is only one God. Everything is, a, is his creation. This is a false idea. Energy is created. It is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We don't think about this. Right? So energy is not eternal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is eternal. Similarly, you're taught concepts of freedom. I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm free to have an abortion. I'm free to do this. I'm free to do that. This is in contradiction to the very definition of a Muslim. You say, when you, you and I, when we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, when we say we are a Muslim, by definition, a Muslim means he has given up, he or she has given up his will to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aslamtu, that I have accepted the Rabb, Allah, as my Lord, and I have put my will according to his. You're no longer free to do whatever you want. You're bound within the boundaries of Islam. If you leave the boundaries of Islam, fine, you can do whatever you want. I hope that makes sense. By definition, a Muslim, he is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He or she is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have a choice other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Once you leave Islam, then yeah, you can, you can do whatever you want. I hope that makes sense. These are just a few examples of being able to evaluate what you are taught. And you as a Muslim, 
You are a thinker. You're not sheep. You are to be people who will lead humanity out of the darknesses that it is in towards the light of Islam. in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that we have named you Muslim. We have given you the term, we have given you the identity, we have named you a Muslim. Just like what you were named before and what is mentioned here in this Quran. So that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be a witness upon you. And that you, the Muslim, is a witness upon humanity. A very powerful ayah to really understand the meaning of this, this section of this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has given you your identity. He has called you Muslim. He's not called you Arab, Desi, Punjabi, American. British. He's not called you any of those names. He's not given you nationalistic ID, identities. Right? He's not given you any of that. He specifically has said, I have called you Muslim. So that the Prophet ﷺ is a witness upon you. And you are a witness upon the rest of humanity. He has put a huge burden upon our shoulders. That you, to, you are to be witnesses upon humanity. You have been given a certain responsibility. You have given a certain mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are 7 billion people on this planet, maybe approximately 1.5 to 2 billion Muslims. Majority of the world is not on Islam. Majority of the world does not have this mercy that you and I were either born into or we converted to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you specifically to be a witness upon mankind. That is the responsibility on our shoulders. And you're not too young to carry that responsibility. None of us are. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he has mentioned this so that you take this as a, 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 an encouragement to identify yourself as a Muslim. There is honor in this. Do not devalue it. There is honor in being called a Muslim. Do not devalue it. And hence, a Muslim is the one who takes the lead, who stands up for the haq, who mentions what is right, who stays away from what is wrong. You define the correct things and the incorrect things according to what your belief system is, according to what your Quran tells you, according to what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. And that is my second point. That your identity as a Muslim is something for you to be to be happy and proud and, merc and, and, and be grateful for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to be so. Do not shy away from your responsibility. Do not shy away from your identity of who you are. So when somebody asks you, who are you? Tell them, I'm a Muslim. There's nothing wrong in this. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called you this. I hope that makes sense. So the MSA, and this is where I'll end inshallah, is a tool that you should use as a means for you to learn the deen this is a plug for the MSA here, okay? And it, it is a tool. It's a place where you guys can gather, learn about the deen, to identify with other Muslims, to take this responsibility of carrying this Islam to the rest of the people on campus, 
understanding who you are, where you came from, what defines you, and being proud of who you are as a Muslim, and becoming critical thinkers. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Podcasts on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran Tafsir, and Sira are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment, and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about IslamPodcast.com.